collision course with death. And so are you. And my agreement is, death gets nothing. I want to die like my Savior. Finished. Not old. You are not supposed to die old. The Bible doesn't teach that. In God's kingdom, you are supposed to die finished. Write that down, please. You are supposed to die like Paul, the apostle. I have finished my cause. You are supposed to die empty. Paul says, I am like a drink offering that have been poured out. Nothing's left. I am now ready to be offered, he says. I'm ready to leave. Why? There's nothing else left. Don't die sick and old. Die empty, he says. Amen. You should never allow the cemetery to get anything from you. That's why you're still breathing. Your age is incriminating. You think you are living long because God loves you. No, you're living long because God's waiting. What is it you dream in? What is it that makes you uncomfortable on your job? Your gift will always frustrate you. Your gift is what you would rather be doing. gift is your purpose. Purpose is your reason for being born. This is why your job depresses you because your job is what you get paid to do but your purpose is what you were born to do and they're different. This is why you could go to a job for 60 years and retire and be depressed because you never did what you were born to do. You did what you were paid to do. So you still owe us. Mama. God says, go back, write the poetry, leave the kids something to remember. Purpose. The king has given you a gift, and it's like diamonds buried, it's a treasure. Let's read the second. Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. Read it loud. Go. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power potential is from God and not from us. That means you are carrying something that doesn't belong to you. He deposited stuff in you. You were not born just to make a living. You were born to make a difference in your generation. That's why God sent me. He sent me here to stop you because you are so busy planning to do nothing. You thought your career was successful. God says, hey, you ain't done what I gave you birth to do yet. And by the way, every person in this room wants to be great. And don't you lie to me. Some of you are frustrated because you haven't made it yet. You've been around for 70 years. But you want to be great. No human does not want to be great. And in this book, I talk about the fact that the, the desire for greatness is normal and divine. If you have no desire to be great, you are not normal. You are in denial. As a matter of fact, Jesus did not discourage the desire for greatness. He encouraged it. Let me prove it. The Bible says, He overheard them arguing and saying, Who is the greatest among us? And He called them aside 
and said unto them, If anyone desires to be great, I'm quoting him now, he did not discourage them, he did not attack the desire, he actually showed them how to achieve it. If anyone, how many? Anyone, why? He knows that everyone wants it. If anyone wants to be great, he says, they must become the slave to everyone and the servant to everyone. What does he mean? Oh, this is good stuff. When I did the research on the word servant, slave, it blew my mind. It had nothing to do with subservience. The word he used means to deploy yourself to the world. If you want to be great, serve your gift to the world. To do that then, you must first discover that's your problem. You haven't found your treasure. That's why you got a job. All the great people in the world, genuinely great people, if you study them, and in this book I do a lot of research on these people, starting with Abraham himself. When you discover your gift, you automatically become great. You work all your life for that company. If you take an apple seed and you plant it, it becomes an apple tree right from the inside of the seed and it becomes fruitful, apple fruit. Now, here's something about trees with fruit. Fruit is the gift. Trees will never bring their fruit to you. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? If you want their fruit, what you got to do? Go to them. You see, when you find your gift, they will come to you for it. What are you known for? That's your greatness. Deep inside of you is a gift screaming. Let me out. Your energy is trapped in your gift. If you feel tired, it's because you haven't found your gift. You have no energy, you feel sluggish and lazy, you haven't found your gift. If you found your gift, you wake up early in the morning and go to bed late. That's why the Bible calls it slave. You become a slave. Not to the people, but to your gift. You serve it so much, you become a slave to it. They call you great. So while you're sleeping, I gotta study, you see. So when you wake up, I can teach you. I'm the slave, not you. So you think I'm a great teacher. I'm up all night and you're sleeping. Who's really the slave? See, that's, that's what I mean by greatness. The Bible says a little slumber, a little sleep, and poverty takes you like a, band, a bandit. You see, if you don't find your gift, then all you get is a salary. Oh, I wish I could be here for a couple more days. See, that's why consultants get paid more than employees. Consultants have a gift. What you got is a trade. And there's a difference. He, Jesus said, even as the Son of Man did not come to be, served but to serve himself a ransom he is a ransom he's a serve ransom that's what makes me great wow what do you serve us what were you born to give us before you die see no one ever asks you the right questions you are never supposed to die sick and tired supposed to just leave because you're finished. That's why I work so hard. 
I'm on a collision course with death. And so are you. And my agreement is, death gets nothing. I want to die like my savior, finished. Not old, finished.